When it comes to discussing the performance of your internet connection, you've undoubtedly seen the terms upload speed and download speed. This is something that comes up especially when you're signing up for an internet plan with your internet service provider. As part of your contract with your internet service provider, they promise you maximum upload and download speeds as part of your internet connection. This is all well and good, but in many cases there's confusion. What is the difference between upload and download speed? In this episode from Network From Home, I'll be diving into that topic, I'll explain what each of these are, and I'll also provide examples of both so you have a clear understanding of what you're signing up for. Okay, there's an important concept to get out of the way here, and that's that your internet connection functions very similarly to a telephone conversation. What I mean by that is that data travels in both directions, both from your home to the internet and from the internet to the devices in your household. This is what leads to the distinction between upload speeds and download speeds. The term you're most familiar with at this time is download speeds. Now download speeds are when data is coming from the internet to the devices in your home. To put it simply, your devices are receiving data that's coming from the internet and they're processing it locally on the device itself. Examples of downloading are, for example, receiving and loading a website on one of your devices, streaming music from the internet, watching a YouTube video, or downloading a file from a shared drive locally onto your computer. What's similar about all these actions is that data is being pulled from the internet onto your device. This is where the term download comes from. So connecting the dots here, when you see download speed as part of an internet plan, that's referring to how quickly you can pull data from the internet onto your devices. Okay, we feel like we have a good understanding of download speed at this point. If so, let's jump over to the other side of the equation. Let's talk about upload speed. To put it in simple terms, upload speed is simply the opposite of download speed. So what do I mean by this? Upload speed involves actions where your devices in your household are sending data to the internet. This is the other side of the telephone analogy that I referred to earlier. A perfect example of an upload action that everyone can relate to is when you type a web page into your internet browser. When you type that web page or that address, say google.com, into your internet browser, you're sending a request to the internet saying, hey, I wanna download this web page so I can view it on my device. As I'll get to shortly, this entire process includes both upload and download actions, but the actual request of typing something into Google or into the search bar of your internet browser, that is a request that's going out to the internet from your device. Therefore, it's an upload action. Other examples of upload actions include uploading a file to an online file share like Google Drive, live streaming, if you are streaming video over the internet to an audience, or lastly, video conferencing. If you're on a Zoom call, your video feed is going from your device to the internet so it can be shared with the other people on the call. So to bring it all together, when you see the term upload speed as part of your internet plan, upload speed is simply referring to how quickly you can perform these upload actions as part of your internet plan. Now that we've gone over upload and download speeds, let me show you a quick example just to make sure we have a concrete understanding of what upload actions are and what download actions are. All right, to refer to the previous example that I talked about that includes both upload and download actions, we're going to navigate to a web page here and I'll walk through when upload actions are happening and when download actions are happening. Okay, the first thing we wanna do, let's say I wanna to go to walmart.com and do some online shopping. The first thing I have to do is type a web page into the search bar here. So I'm going to type www.walmart.com. And as soon as I enter the request here, this will kick off an upload action. My request will travel from my device to the internet, and then the internet will go, they'll find the search page that I'm looking for, they'll send it to my device, and my device will download the data that it receives. So let's first, let's kick this off. Let's start the upload action. And almost instantaneously, you see all these images on the web page here. 
These were all downloaded from the internet, so this is the download part of the action. The request saying, hey, I'm looking for walmart.com, that was an upload action. The download action is when the internet says, here's the web page, and it loads in my internet browser. For this next example, let's say there's a YouTube video that I really want to watch. I type it into the search bar here. Again, when I hit enter, we'll have an upload action as I send that request out to the internet. And then when that information comes back in the form of a web page with a video, that will be a download action. And what's more, as this video is playing, this is a continuous download action. As you can see here in this little load bar, my device is loading the video ahead of time. So that way you can play it without having to buffer. This is a continuous download action because this video is being transferred from the internet to my device and specifically to my web browser. At this point, hopefully it's crystal clear for you the difference between upload speed and download speed when it comes to your internet plan. If you have any questions about this or it's still a little bit murky, please drop a comment below and I'll help you out. If you found this video useful, I would appreciate it if you gave it a like. This will make sure it gets shared with other people who will benefit from this information as well. And lastly, if you like the topics that I discuss and how I present this material, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out more videos moving forward that'll have just as many helpful hints and tricks for you when it comes to your internet and your home network. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and I'll catch you on the next one.